And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're going to take a look at something different, the Matchbox Collection from Thundergriff Games. This here is um, something, I, normally we get a lot of games here that are sent to us by companies to review, but I want to be clear, I backed this on Kickstarter myself because I was excited about it. Thundergriff games, I've liked some of them, I haven't liked others, but if there's one thing I do like about their games, their quality is really well done. And here they have a group of five games, which I'm always suspicious about to some degree because, you know, if a game's really that good, why do you have it in a pack of five? But I found that in these packs of five, sometimes there are good games in them. And this came in such a neat thing. Look at this. It's a case here. It also comes with some play mats. I'm not going to be showing them here because it's so, there's two reasons. One, it's so difficult to wrap those play mats up and put them back in the container. But the second reason is they're completely worthless. They add nothing to these games. None of these games need the play mats. And it was a complete waste of my money to add them on. Um, so they're not worth it. But what about these? Well, here's the thing, folks. I'm just going to tell you right now, this is one of the worst projects I've ever backed on Kickstarter. It's pretty. These components in the art in here, they look nice. And that's it. This is the very definition of it's all surface and nothing more. I think. Now see, I hate this. I hate this collection. I really do. But do you know the number one reason I hate it is because I'm not sure I'm playing any of the games correctly. The rules for all five games are some of the worst rules I've ever read. And some of them, they literally don't explain how to play it. I finally went online, tried to watch videos on how to play these games, which were a little better, but still problematic. Once I did figure out how to play the games, there is two that are mediocre at best, there is one that's bad, and there are two that I find to be plain awful. So I'm not going to go over all five of these, I'm just telling you right now that I really dislike this product at all. It was not a cheap product either. And I went online looking to see, you know, the, maybe I'm missing something. And almost all the positive comments were like, it's really great components, it's really great components. I don't care about that. Is it a good game? And I'm not seeing any talk about that. So let me be clear, I don't think it is. Let's take a look in the box. So the whole, like I said, this is a nice thing. You open up this case here. Now, when I bought it, there's a whole bunch of Kickstarter stretch goals that are put in the top. And I found this to be the first thing that I disliked about the game. And the reason for that was because there's no rules on these Kickstarter stretch goals. I couldn't even figure out what to do with them. And finally, in one of the Kickstarter updates somewhere, they said, oh yeah, the rules are here. That's problematic. Put them in the box. But anyway, so here's the games. It shows you where each of them goes. And this is really nice. Again, like I said, the graphic design here is really well done. Each of these games, now they're not so easy to get out here um, when, when one of them's in the box, but each of them comes out. It's a nice little box here. You push it out with the lid. Each one comes with one really amazing component. That's really good. Again, not complaining about the graphic design and the components. I am complaining about the rules. So we have Rebus. We have I.O., we have 15 Days, we have Golems, and we have Space Lunch. We'll look real quickly at these games. We're starting with I.O., which I think is a bad game, but I don't know because it has the single worst set of rules I think I've read in a long time. There's actually two rules. There's a solitaire game and a two-player cooperative game. And if you wonder what all the pieces are, they only tell you what the pieces you need for each of these two games are. So I was like, where are these pieces? They're not mentioned. Oh, they're mentioned in this one. Oh, this one says you need this rule. It's like, ah! So you're fighting these enemies off here by playing weapon cards, I think. Like I said, the rules are really bad. And I think the weapon cards show where you hit people 
on this, th these different things, and you're just trying to survive through waves of enemies by playing these weapon cards. Even if that does work, even if there is some sort of good game in here, it doesn't sound that interesting, right? It's just kind of a, hey, I'm just trying to beat waves and waves of cards off as they come in. But again, I don't know because the rule book was that bad. Golems is the best game in my opinion, which means it's super mediocre. You're essentially collecting cards, turning them in to get golems. You know, you're trying to get different combinations of things. This game has been done many times before, and this game is not better than any of the ones I played. Like, at best, I might give this a 5 out of 10. Uh, now, I will, these pieces are amazing. I love these, these little gems here that you're using. The artwork's fine, although they also redid the artwork on a lot of these. But why would I play this game, for example, over Century or over Splendor? Games that do the same thing. And maybe this one because of the small size and everything. But like I said, this one is the best of the games in here, and I found it to be incredibly mediocre. Rebus is another game I'm not sure I played correctly, but the way I did play it makes this one of the worst games of the lot. In this one, you have these books that you're playing on bookshelves, and you're trying to make the bookshelf go over 13 points. And you can play them and get points, add points to a bookshelf, or you can play it the other way to put negative points in a bookshelf, and you are just playing bad cards in other people, good cards in yourself, flipping these over. When you flip things over, you get tokens where you can make shelves double, triple, quadruple, or five times points. The, the tokens here have different colors, although it doesn't really matter. Again, really cool components these tokens are. Uh, the books are meh, okay. But this is really the kind of game where you're trying to play good things in yourself and bad things in other players, I think and building up bookshelves and trying to flip them over and then you're like, oh, I can push my luck by making this double. I hope other people don't play bad things on it. Hint, they are. Oh, this is just such a waste of time. There are so many games out there. The idea that you're flipping cards over into bookcases isn't that exciting once you do it five times over the course of a game. I think of all the games in the set, 15 days has the most potential, although horrible rules prevent it from being good. I mean, one of the things that the game does not really make clear when you're teaching it is there are cards in this deck, and they have different backgrounds to them, winter, summer, and fall, but some of the cards have spring on the other side, which is a little confusing. And you're taking these cards, and you're playing them diagonally next to you, and you're trying to play them in ascending or descending order and different things. When you get certain ones, you get these animals, which give you special abilities and you can use those special abilities and that all sounds kind of cool you're collecting cards and trying to get points it's really boring it's really boring collecting these cards uh, once you win one of these animals having the most of different colors gets these for you it's there's a certain point where it's hard to take them from somebody and these give you such a big advantage the game feels like it's a kind of competitive game but at the end of the day you're drawing cards and hoping they're good sometimes the card you need is right out there and it's like oh I, I need it the four to put in there it has some weird rules about replacing cards and wilds again a really bad rule book maybe this one's better than I think think it is as it is right now this is the game of all of them I thought this might have been a decent little card game but I still don't like it then we come to a game that has the rules weren't the worst they're pretty bad rules still uh, but this game is, is, is just a bad 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 game you are trying to collect groups of food there's a pick token here at the bottom on my turn I can take a food and the drink that's next to it or in that row and then we refill that stuff and then it goes in the next turn, and then you pick one. And if you have three of the same drink, you can use those to do a special ability, like switch where stuff is. Oh, this game is so boring. I mean, you're just trying to collect food, but you have three choices on your turn. And you need to collect three drinks of the same type, which is not an easy thing to do. Um, and when you get them, use them to do, oh, I will switch this and this. Oh, now I can take this one instead. The food looks delicious, but this game is just awful. This is the kind of games that when I play them, I actually get mad. I was angry playing these. Why? Because I wanted to play the games. And the rule books were not just bad rule books. I read a lot of bad rule books, but they didn't have the rules in. For at least two of these games, I'm thinking, I don't even know if I'm playing it right. I had to go do research online, watching videos of people who said they played the games, trying to figure out, am I, am I playing this correctly? And Oh, each of these games, they put one beautiful component in it. 
a, a wonderful metal coin, those really cool crystals in the Golem game. You know, they're really cool pieces, but that's not enough to make me want to like this. You know, that's, that's not worth it for me, uh, just having one cool component. Again, I went into this when I got these and I was like, eh, some of them are probably going to be mediocre games. Because again, if the game's strong enough, it's going to be by itself. I wasn't expecting the best of these to be mediocre and then every, some of them just to be outright trash. And I, I have no sympathy for the rule book issue. These rule books should have been given to somebody with the game and say, learn how to play the game from this rule book. And then that person would have said, I can't. Why can't you? You don't point out, you don't even tell me what this component does. This literally doesn't tell me what cards to take on my turn. Oh, well, we'll fix that. That wasn't done here. This was a big Kickstarter, folks. Made a lot of money. And I'm getting rid of it. I'm not putting it in a Dice Tower library so other people can enjoy it because I don't want to have to sit around and go, people go, I don't know how to play this game. And I'm like, oh, I don't know either. Oh, this is one of the biggest wasted opportunities I've ever seen. Recently, I backed a bunch of games made by some children in, uh, I think it was Indonesia, I forget where they came from, and I've been slowly going through those games, and we'll talk about those in the future here on the channel. It was another Kickstarter I backed of some small games. These games were done by some school children, and their rules were better. The components were not as nice as this. The games weren't, are not amazing games that I'm playing, but they were decent games, and the games there were better than this. This is not worth your time, folks. And I, uh, I don't mean to dump on these things like this. It's, it's not something I take joy in, 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 in this at all. But I'm, I'm just kind of enraged that this kind of product, not only does it come out, but then the people, many people who backed it defend it like, oh, well, no, no, it's really that good. No, it's not. We need to admit this sometimes. This is, this is a company almost, in a sense, taking advantage of people's love of Kickstarter and love of components. I love those cool components too, but give me good rules! Or give me at least understandable rules! Because that's not in this box. I cannot condone that, and this is the very opposite of approval for me. In fact, I highly recommend you don't get this. Thundergriff makes a lot of other good games, and those games are good. And if they not make, you know, I'm sure they'll make another Kickstarter, and I'll look at it and go, huh, that might be worth getting. But if they make another anthology, you better believe I'm going the other way. I'm Tom Vassell. You've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment, the opposite of excellence.